Welcome back to another episode of Character Score Plays Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. My name is Nike Up Bobby. I'm Kevondre. And I'm Nike Up. He is. He's uh, feeling like beans, so he's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we still got to record, otherwise, Kevondre would yell at me. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, last time something happened and we are at this continue point. Yes. So that's it, we're continuing on. Let's see if I can do a Nike voice, just. You know, blah, blah, blah. If he fucks it up, it's okay. Is and it? it's probably gonna just be really funny anyway, so that's fine. No. Oh. Are you drinking out of my Harry Potter cup? My tea was, yeah. Oh, okay. Tea and Harry Potter cup. It just goes together. It is a Breton. No. Oh. Anyways. Uh. <clears throat> Your Honor. Nope, that was awful. Change your hands. Please. Please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Perfect. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony, but be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this. Believe me. What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. No shit. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, sir. I was listening to it real booming loud, like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem, old man? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? No. I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Yudge. Can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, your honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he, ho when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. <coughs> the DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, your honor. Th very well, Mr. Rat. It's your witness. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm continuing the charade. Ah, you're a charade person. Charade. Whatever. Whichever. I don't, I don't give a fuck! <laughs> <laughs> it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. <laughs> That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, sir. I was listening to it real booming loud like. Real booming loud. Yeah, okay, boomer. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Can you prove that? No. No, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. Tell me what he was saying. What did she say? Oh, okay. Objection! Uh, they would be... Hey, right. Please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a D radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should absolutely care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask? Hmm? Fine, that, very that's well. That's very poor reasoning and would not work. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? It can be used to verify the time. Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? <clears throat> of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm. 
Maybe my mom was that radio DJ. <laughs> Maybe, oh no! Maybe Von Karma was right. Maybe Von Karma was the radio DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how that helped us at all. That'd be great if his daughter was a radio DJ, and then she left being a radio DJ to be a lawyer in the second game to maybe, fight us. Maybe that is exactly what's happening. Yeah. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to what, bleh, until we get to the bottom of what happened. So, Lada had said that the gunshot was after it was Christmas already. Yeah. So maybe we need to present her thingy to him. Sure. Right on the It's Almost Christmas thing? Yeah. Hey, it's almost Christmas. Alright. So, hey, have you seen this fucking parrot? <laughs> uh, yeah, after yeah. midnight. Exactly. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Never mind my face. Why you twitching, lie boy? He's, he's uh, streaming around Twitch? Yeah. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Red? Your Honor. Did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey... It's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, eh? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? Santa hadn't delivered the presents yet. Fucking mega Santa. How could you shoot the gun that you got for Christmas if Santa hadn't delivered it? A Red Rider BB gun with a compass and a stock and you, this thing which tells time. You're gonna shoot your fucking eye out, kid. Yeah, Larry. <laughs> when he heard the gunshot... It was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. Well, in other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Yeah. And that's great. Order, order, shut the fuck up. What does this mean? These nuts. Oh, the two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness said he heard a gunshot before midnight. He was listening to the radio station for the other coast. You don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's how it works. He was listening to a California radio station, but he was on the East Coast. You don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. The answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Rat? I agree with Von Karma. <laughs> he definitely is suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim? You heard the gunshot before midnight. He's a fucking liar. But I, I should probably go with he, he's right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's because he's, he's fucking right. Yeah. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Ellipses. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. I like the idea that Von Karma is the type of guy who would say his own ellipses. <laughs> Not just the dot 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 that we've done before, but he says ellipsis. Right, because he's such a fanciful cunt. Yeah. Okay. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Uh. Uh. Bum ba da bum bum. Oh, this would be it, right? Twelve twenty-four. Oh, yeah. Eleven fifty. Yeah. Look at this photograph. We're it's, gonna get copy struck by gonna, Nickelback. It's, it'll make you fucking laugh. If he does it to the fucking president, he's gonna do it to us. Yeah. <laughs> Did what? Uh, Trump had the look at this photograph meme on his Twitter, and then Nickelback copyright struck it, so it had to be taken down. Good for Nickelback. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> right. I was like, wow, well, way to go, you guys. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, this was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 
11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Y your Honor, you're being slow as fuck here. Come on, keep up. Have you met him? <laughs> <laughs> this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. <laughs> that camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct! There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that this is the case. Then where does that leave us? Fuck if I know. M. Shart <laughs> testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. M. Shart? Yeah. <laughs> She gave me a blumpkin just the other day. Are you claiming she was mistaken? It is the way of the South to give the blumpkin to the judge. Yeah, that's... Every day. Yeah, we all do that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I we agree. just line up at the courthouse to give out blumpkins. That's what, That's the Kentucky way. What, uh, what the fuck is a blumpkin? What is a blumpkin? Yeah. It's when uh, you get a blowjob when you're taking a dump. Oh? Yeah. Is that like an actual thing? Yeah. I thought you knew that, and that's no. why it was funny this whole time. No, I just thought you kind of, like, <coughs> made up the word, because... Oh, no, it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you're, you're on the toilet taking a shit, and the chick is giving you a blowjob. That's a blumpkin. Oh, I don't care for that. Pants down, Mr. Rod. Time for a blumpkin. <laughs> Chick is <Anyways>. everything. <laughs> Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Yeah, the second one was just an echo of the first one. Yeah, it's no big deal. Why would this be? Objection! Do not be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed triggering the camera. Oh, that's true. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. He had cocaine, didn't he? Well, Mr. Rat, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? I can prove that Larry had cocaine <laughs> and his nose was clear. He's got it in there now. <laughs> Please show the court evidence if you have it. Um. Yeah. Uh -huh. Fired three times. Yeah, that might be it. I keep forgetting it says three times. Maybe, maybe this fucking parrot. Yeah, the parrot was just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, I think the gun would be the right one, right? That it was fired three times. Yeah, I think so. Okay. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Don't point that thing at me, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Rabble, 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 rabble. Order, order! <laughs> hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen on the night of the lake. Y your Honor, do you, do you know what this fucking trial is about? Keep, keep the fuck up. Mr. Rat, I'm having a stroke, please. <laughs> exactly! I am also having a stroke. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh-oh. I better think of something quick. Da -da -da. Wait Shit. a second! Someone turned off the lights. <laughs> gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What, what's wrong, Nick? 
I have it! I have it! Uh-huh. <laughs> remember the case with the steel samurai? Uh-huh. Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? <laughs> if we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Unless you get held in contempt of court again. Yeah, but they'll be fine. Yeah. Ellipses. <laughs> you just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Uh, yes, Mr. Rat? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. Holy shit, what the fuck is he talking about? Rabble, rabble, rabble. What do you mean, Mr. Rat? So, you finally realized the truth. The one time he actually says, like, tsk, 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 and he didn't do the little finger wag? Von Karma, your shit's fucking backwards. I like his earrings, though. Oh, yeah, it's very fancy. He's got gauges in there. He's just like, yeah, please open that very wide. <laughs> there could be no other murderer <laughs> here than Miles Edward himself. Wrong, Von Karma. I have to hold my headphones when I shake my head like Phoenix. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. <laughs> Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on the boat. Unsubstantiated. <coughs> This is a video I took. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell in the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Rat? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on that photo says 15. But <laughs> zero, zero, 15. But Larry heard a gunshot 20 mi 25 minutes before that. That no one else heard for some reason, except that fucking camera. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. It's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? It's a good question. Explain who the two men on the boat are. Uh, Edgeworth and the murderer. Edgeworth and Hammond. The murderer and Hammond. Well, we saw Edgeworth in the boat. Yeah. So it's gotta be Edgeworth. Yeah. But, I mean, Edgeworth and Hammond is already what we assume it is, so it's gotta be Edgeworth and the murderer, right? You would... I would think so. Yeah. 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 Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Oh yeah, so it is exactly like the Steel Samurai thing. Yeah. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. Turns out, it was the old man in the boat shack. Oh, yeah. Fucking killing lawyers. Or that Colonel Mustard ass motherfucker that I got. Yeah. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Look ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Uh... Oh, oh shit! I don't think it's either of those. Yeah, I, I think we don't know yet. I don't think we have enough evidence. She was just trying to give Edgeworth a Blumpkin, and he was just like, no. 
Because he doesn't take a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Ne he's never taken a shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, IDK lol. I, I, I do <laughs> like the idea that it's a lot of heart. Anyways, IDK. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time! I don't know, because he never told us. Oh, shit! You were right! Oh, ho ho The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. In the fucking boat shop! <laughs> Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? Might suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat. I like his shit-eating grin. Yeah. What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. It's, uh, got, it's gotta be, like, in the shop, right? Yeah, I, I would think. Unless it was over here. Uh, that's where Lana was. Yeah, maybe, maybe on this far distant shore? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was way the fuck over here, a place we've never been to. Or here. Probably the shop, though. I'm gonna stick with the shop. Take that! Here, of course. The boat shop where he lives. That way he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proofs that this boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was driving his boat around like a fucking idiot, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Searching for something. Grid pattern, motherfucker. <laughs> Anyways, he finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if you had just returned the boat? The boat shop. I'm glad you could put two and two together, Judge. Larry's just standing there. I was like worried that. there for a moment. Mr. Rat, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Not even a little. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. Not something your sister taught me. <laughs> Taking it slow. <laughs> Anyways. Figuring it out as you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that night, the caretaker at the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh! <laughs> this was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Oh, Bobby Hams. Anyways, then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? I would say the boat shop caretaker, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yeah. Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details. Details. <laughs> Knows this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Uh, because the first shot missed or to create a witness. I mean, he was trying to miss, so it... That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, so it would be to create a witness. Yeah. Right? I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then...
the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Ellipsis. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men in the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything fall else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's white coat back on the body. And threw the body into the lake. This just seems so very unlikely. Yes. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Like, if you say so. I think that my original theory makes more sense. It does not. Oh. Bailiff. Bring out the witness from before. <laughs> I thought he was going to say, take Mr. Right away to have his head examined. Uh, yeah, M me too. I need it. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. I don't think you can testify in court without them knowing your name. Correct. Very well. While we were waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Absolutely not. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Fuck you, Your Honor. Why would he talk to you if he wouldn't talk to me? That's Mr. Edgeworth. That soon dare ass motherfucker. You heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake on midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your, uh, Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared! He isn't in the boat shop, either! What? What should I do? Calm down there, Louis Armstrong. But find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Look how erect Edgeworth is in that. Quite an erect boy. Hey, Mr. Von Kama, your witness has disappeared. Hey, Edgeworth. Why are you so erect? <laughs> it's for you. Oh, oh, I fucking knew it. I'm doing my Phoenix some pressure. <laughs> yeah. Metal Gear. Yeah. <laughs> A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize its full forces to find that witness. I fucked up saying many things in that sentence. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Like, I mean, I can tell you who he is right now. Yeah, we already figured it out. It wasn't that fucking hard. Yay, Nick! You did it! <laughs> <laughs> she sounds so enthusiastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure. Once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. Should probably buy him a cat. Buy him a cat? Yeah. Okay. It's like the most asshole gift you can give. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> like, yeah, you helped me, and I want to acknowledge that, but also, you're kind of a cunt, so here's a cat. <laughs> I like the idea of just, like, giving a goldfish to somebody who helped you out. <laughs> like, you went to the carnival with Satch, and you, you got the goldfish. With the little paper fella? Yes. And then you just like, here you go. Thanks for yeah. helping me in court. Yeah. I hope that you'll take this in lieu of payment. Yes. <laughs> I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. Oh, hi, kitty. You getting a hairball? He hairball. 
See, another reason why a cat might be just like the worst gift to give somebody. Yeah, man. Cats are terrible. I love them. Yeah. Anyways, I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgy Boy. Ellipsis. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Er, did, did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. Oh. I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over yet for me. What, what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. Is it why my uh, ass is so dummy thick? Yes. Donuts. <laughs> that I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth. No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? What is it about? It's a nightmare I have had. No one gives a shit. Go back to bed. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Oh, hey, look at that. Did Edgeworth shoot his father? Uh, maybe. Because that would be a hell of a twist. Yeah, it turns out. Edgeworth's kind of a dick. We should get him a cat. <laughs> he probably already has got like ten. Yeah. Just look at the way he dresses. Of course he has ten cats. Yeah. He dresses like Aaron Burr. Sir. Yeah. But okay, that that's it for this episode. We ended right on time. It was a good place to end, and it was the right time in the recording. It was a very exciting time. Yes. I love it when a plan comes together. Hold on there, A-Team. Yeah. I'm Hannibal. Yeah. From A-Team. Yeah. <laughs> Um, That's not the same character. Oh. There is only one Hannibal. Ever. Yes. I assume that when they do a second reboot of the A-Team, they're going to get Anthony Hopkins. Oh, you're talking about that Hannibal, not the old, you know, Siege Against the Romans and all that stuff. Uh, never mind. So, uh, we should probably do shout-outs. Also, Hannibal Bur Burris, Burgess... Sure. From the Eric Andre show, right? Sure. Something like that. Is he a person? I think so. In that in that one meme of it just like the dude gets shot and he's like, Why would something do this? Oh yeah, that's the one funny thing that that dude ever did. Yeah. Also a couple other things. I've seen gifts. No. But oh also, just like why are you why are you booing? I'm right. Uh, etc. I kept thinking it was Randy Jackson. In those pictures, <laughs> but <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's only a bit different. We should probably do our shout outs okay, before shout it gets outs. worse. <laughs> How about you go first? Okay, my shout out is going to go towards a show that I've been watching on Amazon. And it's an anthology series, so each episode is very different, based on the works of Philip K. Dick. And it's called Electric Sleep. Uh, Philip K. Dick was a prolific sci fi writer, and he also wrote. A lot of the stuff that really influences our stuff today, when you think about sci-fi and trippy shit. So, do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. That's what inspired Total Recall, which is a really good one. He wrote Minority Report, which got turned into a movie. And then a TV show. And then a TV show. The book was way better. I saw that <laughs> movie in the theater. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The, I, I like the movie. I haven't watched the TV show. But the book was still better. Uh, I... Yeah. A lot of his stuff deals with, hey, once androids take over and they start to become more human, where is that line drawn? What will they be able to do? What differences will we be able to tell? How far is this going to go and how bad can it get? Which is pretty cool. You see a lot of similar stuff in shows like Black Mirror and Love, Death, and Robots. And a lot of Ghost in the Shell really owes itself to Philip K. Dick, too. I mean, dude, dude was fucking out there. Especially considering how long ago some of those stories were written. But yeah, it's a good show, and I like it. So you should watch it. On a kind of similar note, 
I'm doing a shout out to a, a visual novel video game called Valhalla. It's spelled V A one one Hall dash A. It's it's like a oh yeah this is in like the eleventh thing and it's in Hall A whatever but they just called it Valhalla because basically it's a cyberpunk game where you're a bartending lesbian lady, um, which is just my favorite sentence of the year, <laughs> and it's great. You have all these these regular clients that come in. Some of them are uh, Lilim, which are basically robots. Um, that you know it's just like oh yeah these robots these lilim are a lot more human than they were when i was a kid and it's getting hard to tell at the point because humans are getting more robotic robots are getting more human where's the the difference at this point yeah all right so one of your clients is a is a robot hooker um and she's just the most bubbly person um but there's there's all of these different storylines, and you get to know like your coworkers' backstories, your boss uh, backstory, your own backstory, and it's really good. the The sprite art is incredible. Um, I I highly recommend it to anybody who could possibly like a visual novel. If you're watching this series, you probably like it. Um, so yeah, okay, that that'd be a fair one. I would absolutely recommend checking it out and you know like throughout the time you're also just making drinks um i got to the point where i i memorized a few of the the uh the different ingredients to make a drink so like i can make a beer without having to look it up in the in the manual because it's all made out of like creatine or whatever the fuck just all of these different weird things creatine and grenadine and yeah yeah it was it was more complicated sounding things but anyway um I really enjoyed it, uh, and I finished it yesterday, and I'm very sad about that. I'm probably going to move on to another visual novel soon, but I decided I'm just going to rewatch Sensate first, so that's fun. But I'll probably play Danganronpa after that. Yeah. So, Because we were planning on playing Danganronpa on the channel, but we're going to probably do all three of these Phoenix Wright games first, and this is episode 31 of the first game. <laughs> they take so, a bit. It's going to be quite some time before we even get close to coming to that, so I figure I'll just play it by myself the f uh, for now and then l revisit it later. Should be fun. Um, but, yeah, so definitely pick up Valhalla. It's on Switch. I think it's on Vita and Steam. Um, I'm not sure if it's on PS4. I'm no I know it's not on Xbox. Uh, but, yeah, I would definitely pick it up. It's not that expensive, and it's very fun. Yes. But all right, guys, we'll see you next time for some more Pahonix, right? Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye.